Okay, uh, Unit 6, Lecture 1A, um, we're going to see um, in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, we're going to see economic opportunity, industrialization, um, technological change, and immigration that drive American growth and expansion. Um, we're going to see this as a time period of great, great change, um, both in, in um, where populations live um, and, and how we live in the U.S., okay? Um, after the Civil War, we're going to see a great deal of settlement um, and westward movement, um, and it's going to really increase a lot in that area between the Mississippi River and the Pacific Ocean, bringing about great, great change in the West. Um, <clears throat> the destruction caused by the Civil War, remember the South fought a um, defensive war, um, is going to make it necessary for many, many people to, to rebuild their lives, and that's going to drive and stimulate uh, movement West, okay? Um, we're also going to see the government try to um, inspire people to move through the um, legislation, the Homestead Act of 1862, which will be on your um, whiteboard in just a minute. This act, you need to know, it gives um, settlers 160 acres of land, practically free public land to settlers, um, every head of household over 21, who would live on and farm that land for five years. Um, though there was one condition, this is during and right after the Civil War, you could not have borne arms against the um, federal government, against the Union. All right, I'm going to throw up a whiteboard for you quick to get some terms, okay? Um, there you go. Well, maybe I should get rid of that picture, too. Okay, um, look them over, make sure you get them all. This is what we're going to talk about. This is for the whole of lecture one, okay? Um, so I'm hoping it'll be A, B, and no more than C. All right, so we're going to see many Southerners, many freed slaves move west after the war, hoping for a new start. Um, many white Southerners, though, can't take advantage of the Homestead Act. Um, freed slaves that move west, um, particularly to Kansas, we're going to refer to as exodusters, okay? Um, though we should keep in mind, because we're going to talk about it later, the Great Migration, Large-scale movement, mass movement of African Americans won't occur till near World War One, when we really um, have to start manufacturing a great deal. Okay, so the years um, right before and right after the Civil War are the uh, era of the American cowboy. All right, cowboys are those guys they conduct. Long cattle drives across the open range, hundreds of miles of open range, which is the unfenced land of the West. All right, um, they bring their cattle to market. The open range is going to last um, till Joseph Glidden is a name you should know too. He's not on the board, and I'm sure we'll mention him in class. He he develops barbed wire, which really cheaply fences in land, uh, helps close up the range. Anyway, herds are going to be rounded up in Texas and driven towards markets like Abilene. Um, where they could be loaded on trains and shipped to cities like Kansas City, Omaha, and Chicago, um, who are all still famous, or which are all still famous, um, for their connection to the, the cattle industry, the beef industry. And there, in those cities, the cattle will be slaughtered, um, butchered, and shipped further east to the big cities. Um, and this is all pretty much possible because of the... Um, the expansion of the railroad industry, okay, um, which is going to make... Uh, it possible to ship all that meat back east. All right, so new technologies like the railroad are going to really um, help and in, inspire the Western movement. Uh, we have the railroad, we'll have the mechanical reaper by Cyrus McCormick, um, the steel plow by John Deere. They all help in one way or another to open up the, the West to settlement. Um, the plow, of course, is going to, steel plow is going to allow us to get through that thick sod and plant out there. The mechanical reaper helps harvest. All right, so these inventions are going to um, help turn the Great Plains from an unsettled frontier into an area of farms, ranches, and towns, okay? And this is uh, all very unfortunate for the Native American who lives there um, because they're obviously in the way of our progress and they're going to have to be forcibly removed. Um, and this removal is going to continue. We know it starts in, in great earnest uh, with Jackson, um, but it's going to continue from the end of the Civil War to the end of the 19th century as settlers flock west. That's the end of Lecture 1A. And for Unit 6, we're going to start B in just a second.